Hey guys, it's Tori, and today I'm going to be doing my July TBR, or Pile of Possibilities. There's a readathon going on that I do want to participate in at least a little bit, probably not as much as I do other years, but we'll get into that in a moment. The other thing going on this month, and I mentioned this vaguely in one of my Boston vlogs with some of the book hauls that I wanted to do something special in July. And that is I really want to read some more American history focused things. Like I, I'm obviously American, but frankly I read a lot more from Europe and yeah, mostly Europe. So really American literature, classics, nonfiction, even fiction, more recent fiction works, I just don't read that much. And I'd like to read a little bit more, especially in the month of Independence Day. At the end of the month, I'm from Utah, and at the end of the month we actually have our Utah Becoming a State Day. We call it Pioneer Day. So I just feel like it's very much a month for thinking about American history and all of the good that's been done, as well as recognizing and acknowledging the bad and hoping for a better future. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I have several nonfiction works, I have a few fiction works, and then like I said, there is a readathon I want to participate in a little bit outside of this challenge for myself. So I think I'll start there because it's it's Jane Austen July. Obviously, if you haven't participated in Jane Austen July before, it is a wonderful reading challenge that is focused on reading the works of Jane Austen as well as stuff surrounding her time period. And I actually have one that's specifically just Jane Austen, and then I have another one that will work for my American history thing, but it's still like it's set in 1826, so just slightly after Jane Austen's time. So I think it will work for that as well, as far as I believe one of the challenges is to read a fiction work that's inspired inspired by Jane Austen's time period or like inspired by one of her works. So let's start with the one that's just very specifically Jane Austen because I only have one of those and that is Lady Susan and other works by Jane Austen. I have read Lady Susan so I don't think I'll read that but I'll probably read her other works. This includes like her unfinished novels as well as a lot of her juvenilia. So that is what I'm hoping to read at least some of. I'd love to read the whole thing but with everything else I really want to prioritize this month that I'll mention. I don't think I'll be able to, but I'd like to at least read a couple stories so I'm in some way participating in Jane Austen July. Um, one of the prompts is to read one of her novels, which I have read all of, and I know pretty soon I'm going to have to be looking at Emma for my podcast. So I just don't think I want to read one of her novels this month knowing that's coming up. I also just recently reviewed Pride and Prejudice for my podcast, so I've had some Jane Austen, so I feel like this will work for the second prompt, which is to read something else by Jenna Jane Austen other than her main novels. So that is the plan. I will read something from this, potentially the whole thing depending on my mood, but at least something. Then we'll just get started with the fiction works for my American History Challenge for myself, because the one that will work for Jane Austen July is America's First Daughter by Stephanie Dre and Laura Camois. Cam Camoy? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. This is a fictionalized story about um, Jefferson's daughter, who I believe did pass away early when she was young. And I'm very curious to see how this goes. I know it's a pretty popular work, so I'm interested to see particularly the representation of slavery in this and the interactions between her and the slaves because obviously her father owned slaves and actually fathered some children by slaves and so and I know that's brought up in this book based on the synopsis so I'm very curious to see how that goes especially because it is such a popular book. So I assume this is going to be difficult to read in some places and also just very interesting in other places. Thomas Jefferson I have mixed opinions on because I do think he was a very intelligent man and I think he obviously did things that were very important to the birth of our country. However, he was also a very flawed man and did some things that I would not get behind, such as his relationship with his slave. So anyway, I'm very curious to see how I end up feeling about this. Like I said, it's pretty popular and I know my mom read it and I believe she liked it as well. So we'll see how that goes. Then the other fiction work from American History, and I'm pretty sure the only other one that I have that I haven't read yet, um, is Booth by Karen Joy Fowler, and I'm pretty certain I'm going to read this. I read the first few pages a little bit ago to try to decide what I was going to read next, and I really, really loved them, so I'm really excited to get into this. This is about the family of John Wilkes Booth, who assassinated President Lincoln, but I've heard it's really not necessarily about that. Like, it does impact them, obviously, as a family, but I think it's a lot more of an exploration of this family within their position, within this context, this time period, and exploring that as opposed to necessarily 
necessarily focusing on John Wilkes himself. I believe he's a little more of a side character in this. But this family was a family of actors and they were pretty famous. So that's why I think it will be really interesting to see this time period through the eyes of this theatrical family. I know some people who were disappointed in this, but I know of at least a couple of people who really loved it. It was put up for some awards, I believe. I believe it was put up for the Booker Prize last year. So I'm very excited to read this. Like I said, I liked the first few pages. I liked the writing thus far. So yes, I think there's a really strong chance I'm going to get to this. Really, I think these three I mean, just part of this one, like I said, but I think between the three of these, I probably will get to these. But then when we get into the rest of these, it's a little more uncertain what I'm going to be able to get to. So first of all, I wanted to include at least one American classic on here. I have very few American classics that I've really liked, unfortunately, in my life. I'm just a Victorian era girl and I'm just a European reader, unfortunately, as far as like 19th century classics, especially, but like really in general, like that's where I just find my sweet st spot. I do like branching out, of course, and there's other things I like besides that, but that's where I have my comfort in classics and I just enjoy that kind of stuff. So anyway, I don't have a lot of American classics I've really liked. I really love Little Women, of course. I've loved both The Age of Innocence and The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. So those are a few um, American classics that I really have enjoyed. But off the top of my head, those are really the only ones I can think of. Oh, and The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Um, I also really like. So the one I think I might end up picking up um, this month if I'm in a classics mood is The Blythesdale Romance by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I recently reread The Scarlet Letter when I was going around Boston while I listened to the audiobook for it and just love Nathaniel Hawthorne's writing and really loved that story and I've heard this one's really good. It's also not very long and I just feel like I'm really going to like it. I do also have The Marble Fawn by Nathaniel Hawthorne but I think that one is one that I'll have to be in a specific mood for in a very like whimsical one wanderlust type of mood because I know it's a lot about Rome and the art there and stuff like it doesn't really have a consistent plot as far as what I've been able to hear it's a little bit more of a travelogue but there is a dramatic plot to it it's just a little more on the side so anyway I feel like this one will work a little bit better for the reading mood I've been in and we'll see if I get to this like I said the rest besides those few fiction works I just I'm not sure what I'm gonna get to, but hopefully potentially this. Then I just have a bunch of nonfiction. So first of all, I think the audiobook I'm going to listen to, I still have to get through the rest of Mary, Queen of the I Scotland and the Isles by Margaret George, which I'm listening to on audiobook still. And I just, I keep wanting to listen to music instead. So I haven't quite gotten as far with it as I would have liked to, but hopefully I'll still be able to finish it by the end of June, if not just in the early part of July. And then I intend to listen to the audiobook for a book called The Warmth of Other Suns, I believe, by Isabel. I can't remember, but here's the cover. This is about um, the migration of Black individuals in America, I believe in the early 20th century. I could be wrong about that, but I believe it's in the early 20th century. This author also wrote Cast, um, which is a pretty popular one by her a few years ago, and that's the one I really want to read, but I couldn't find the audiobook for it, at least not at the time that I was looking for the audiobook for it on Audible, but I did find this one. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to listen to this one and then if I liked it I can get cast and read it physically later or maybe they'll get the audiobook for it by then and I'll be able to listen to it but anyway either way I did want to include something more specifically about the black people in America because that's clearly a very important part of our history. The day I'm filming this, it's actually Juneteenth, so there's a little bit more of a focus on that for me today, just in my th thought process anyway, and of course I'm in the middle of other things right now, so I can't really stop in the middle and turn to a whole big nonfiction work about it, but I do want to make sure in July when I'm doing this focus on American history that I do include something like that. So that I will probably be my audiobook as soon as I finish Mary, um, Queen of Scotland and the, and the Isles. Then I have a few physical nonfiction books that I'd like to read. I don't read that much nonfiction, so I kind of feel like, I mean, usually I listen to it on audiobooks, so I have my audiobook. So between these, it will just kind of depend on what my mood is. I think, I'll tell you which ones I think I'm most likely to read, but really all of these I'd like to 
get into so we'll just see what happens but the first one I have here is the letters of John and Abigail Adams if you have been around for a little bit you'll probably know I love John and Abigail a lot I got this on my trip to Boston when I visited Quincy I don't think I'm going to read this whole thing but I'd like to at least start it I think it's one that I'd like to just start reading and be reading for a good long time because I just I love them so much and I just really would love to get through this whole thing cover to cover. I just think it's going to be more of something that I'm like, you know, maybe I'm in a reading slump, but I just want to make sure I'm staying in that habit. I can read a couple of letters. Um, I just think it will be nice that way. And like I said, I just love them. So I would love to get into this. Then I think I'll start with the two that I'm most certain I'm going to read. And then I'll end with one that I really, really would love to get to. I just knowing that I'm planning to read all these other books, there's going to be something I don't get to. And I think this is probably going to be the one I let it be, but I really want to read it. Anyway, let's start with the two, like I said, that I'm a little more focused on as far as the nonfiction, the physical nonfiction goes. So for First of all, I have here American Phoenix by Jane Hampton Cook. This is about John Quincy and Louisa Adams, so John and Abigail's son and his wife. And I believe it focuses on their impact on the War of 1812 with Great Britain. He was a, gosh, I cannot remember the word. Um, He was an ambassador to the UK, I believe, for a certain amount of time. I think he started actually in Russia. I don't know. Anyway, he made a big impact on being able to find the peace and saved American independence, as it says in the little subtitle thing. But anyway, I have had this for years. This actually I got, well, my dad got it when we were in Quincy last time I went to Boston, which was about eight seven years ago and I don't think he's ever read it I've never read it because I wasn't really that into nonfiction until more recently and so more recent years I guess and so I was like you know what I really would like to read this especially when I was in Quincy this time I was like I really need to read the book we got last time so I think this is the one that I'll probably break up throughout the month and be reading just a little bit throughout like every day throughout the month We'll see how that goes though, because I, I'm i still doing so much. Like June has been busy, I've mentioned it before. I just have a lot more going on that takes up my time. And then when I have free time, I'm a little less inclined to read. Like I'm a little more inclined right now to like do more easy, fast entertainment, like watching things. So we'll see how it goes, but I'd like to try to read this throughout the month um, and see if I can get through the whole thing. Then the other one I'm pretty sure I'm going to read is a shorter one, which is why I'm like, I feel like it's one I could potentially read in between some of the fiction works um, if I'm so inclined. And that book is Pioneering the Vote, The Untold Story of Suffragists in Utah and the West by Naylin McBain. So a lot of the focus on suffragettes, suffragists in general are, focus a lot in the UK and then on the eastern side of the United States and this book specifically talks about those in the west side of the United States and how they impacted this wonderful change in policy when it comes to voting. And so yeah, it's about women's right to vote and I got it a little while ago. It's sold in the bookstore I work in and I decided to pick it up and I am really excited about it. So I think that I would love to get to this probably towards the end of the month because that is when Utah's statehood day occurs and so I feel like it would just work very well specifically for that. So that is one that I'm very excited to get to if I can. And then we have the book that I really, I don't think I'm going to get to, but I really, really would love to. I'm so excited about it. And that is Six Women of Salem, The Untold Story of the Accused and Their Accusers in the Salem Witch Trials by Marilyn K. Roach. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's covering six of the women who were executed during the Salem Witch Trials and just the context of when this was happening. When I bought this in Salem um, on the spot, Boston trip. The lady at the register told me that this author is actually a very well-known historian within Salem and she's actually the one they often go to whenever they find something new regarding the witch trials and so she's definitely a really good one, a really good resource for information about it. So I would love 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 to get to this like I said but it's kind of a little bit not like huge but it's definitely more in the long range and with all these other books I want to get to I just 
don't think this is going to happen, but if it does, that's great and we'll take it. Or perhaps maybe I'll just save it. I don't know. I always think of like saving things like witch stuff and like some of those more horror gothic stories for October because, you know, Halloween, but I just know I get to October and I just want to read Victorian literature. So potentially I could try to at least start this in October for Halloween, but I know myself, like I said, and I know I'll just want to do Victor Victorian stuff. So anyway, that is my plan for this July reading month. My possibilities for this July reading month. I'm really excited about it. I have not read very much in June, unfortunately. It is, as I said, the 19th of June and I've only finished two books and I'm a little sad about it, but I also knew this month was going to be crazy. And I also did kind of feel myself falling into a reading slump. I think I'm starting to pull out of it though. So we'll see how that goes. It really helped the other day on Saturday. I actually read the entirety of the first Hunger Games novel because I am doing that one for a podcast. And I was like, oh, I'll just start it today and get a little bit of it annotated and stuff. And then I just couldn't stop. So I just spent like five hours and just finished the whole thing. And it was great. It was definitely well worth it. So, and then after that, I feel a little more excited to read. So anyway, that's all besides the point. I'm going to end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you've read any of the books I've mentioned, if you know of any really great fiction, nonfiction, or classic works um, that focus around American history. I would love to hear about it. I hope you are having a wonderful reading week and I will see you next time. Bye!